My name is Austin Collins. I'm an ag science major, and today I'm going to talk to you about concussions and specifically football. So first off, what exactly is a concussion? A concussion is trauma to the brain caused by like, some sort of blunt force that causes your brain to bounce against the side of your skull and it causes neurological impairments which could be anything from actually getting knocked out at the time of the impact or just the fact that you can't walk, you have trouble talking like right after the concussion. And some symptoms are headaches, nausea, and then you have difficulty concentrating. I'm, I know some people who have concussions, they can't read. Like in high school, a couple of kids had concussions, and they were basically out of class because they couldn't read just because it made their head hurt trying to focus. <coughs> so when the concussion is received, um, what happens is the brain is actually floating inside your skull and um, cerebral fluid, and it sort of gives a cushion to where every time you bump your head on something you didn't get a concussion, it sort of holds it in there a little bit. But when the force is too much is when you actually get a concussion. Um, in football, a lot of times concussions occur when there's head-to-head -head contact. Um, they have a new rule in the NFL about defenseless players because even whiplash can cause um, concussions. And then most concussions actually occur on the person delivering the hit when, like, if when your head is lowered and head-to-head -head contact is made, 90% of the time the person that actually gets hit doesn't suffer the concussion. It's actually the person making the hit. And then also, <coughs> if you aren't wearing a mouthpiece or if your chin strap's not tightened correctly, those can both cause the helmet to move a little bit and not actually work like it's supposed to. And that can also be an easier way for you to get concussion. And, um, 47% of all concussions every year come from high school football, which is uh, you, mostly it's because they don't <coughs> properly tackle or hit, or they use their head more than they should, because you don't see nowhere near as many concussions in college and, and NFL, and they hit twice as hard. So it's just mainly not knowing exactly what to do and knowing the safety precautions that you should take. And 37% of those concussions in high school actually happen in practice, not in actual games. Because in practice you're doing a lot of excessive hitting, like drills where you're hitting one after another, just going nonstop, and just over and over again getting hit can cause concussions too. It's not just one general blow. So when you have symptoms like of a concussion, you're automatically removed from a game. So your trainer is going to take you out and check you out and see what's going on. They have, should give you a concussion test or he will give you a concussion test. And it starts off like the beginning of the season, they'll do like a base test to see what you actually score on it. And then they'll give you the same exact test again when they think you have concussion symptoms. And if your grade is a certain amount lower than what it was um, on your initial testing, you're considered to have a concussion. And um, just a lot of the questions on like the testing is just like you have to name five, they'll, your trainer will tell you five words and you have to repeat the five words back and then like say the alphabet in the first and simple things like that that just when you have a concussion you can't comprehend. But um, after you're diagnosed with a concussion in order to get back to play, you have to go through the um, these steps here. You start off where you have no activity until there's no, you don't have any headaches or anything like that. And then once you, you're headache free when you're sitting around, you start some light exercise. And so that could be anything from just a light jog or riding a stationary bike or something like that. And if you, um, if you experience any head pain during that, you go back to your station at oh, home, no activity. And then if you have no problem there, you move down to the next one, which would be your sport specific. And then on, all the way down to where you sort of work yourself back in to make sure that your concussion is treated properly and you don't go back in too early to where it could actually cause more severe damage. And um, you might think, how are we trying to prevent concussions with such a high amount? There are actually um, 
they're designing new football helmets like the ones I think Tech was wearing on the other day that have like a little square right <coughs> in the front. They sort of break more of the, um, they have a flex which sort of breaks more of the impact to make it easier. And then also, um, I know VHSL, Virginia High School League does it, but you have mandatory helmet inspections each year. You have to send all your helmets off. They get certified and then they're sent back to you saying that they're safe for play and there's going to be no problem. And then another thing they're doing is the outlawing of head-to-head -head contact or um, the penalty for a defenseless player. They're doing that to take safety precautions because that was a big part of concussions. And then, like I said earlier, the mandatory concussion testing at the beginning of every year so you have like a base score on your test to go off of to make sure that they treat concussions properly. And um, this is a quote from Hall of Fame running back Eric Dickerson. He said, you were supposed to be tough. You were supposed to play through pain. You were not supposed to cry. We are taught that early on in the game as kids. Tough sport, brutal sport. It's like the gladiator. People want to see the big hits. They wind up on Sports Center. And as a player, you don't want to admit that you're injured. And basically, he's talking here about how a lot of players who receive some sort of head pain don't report it and that's when things get dangerous. So always report a concussion. Um, in the last 10 years, like 40 deaths have occurred from concussions um, worldwide. So I mean that's every sport. But I mean yeah, it's a small number considered worldwide, but still it's, I mean, it's 40 more deaths than you want that could be prevented. So. Um, a big part of what happens to people when um, they actually either die or receive um, physical disabilities or mental disabilities from concussions is when they actually ignore a concussion and they receive another hit which was capable of causing a concussion and it's called second hit syndrome which this is when 90% of the time it will not go right to a coma and um, it can be very very harmful to the body and um, I actually have a <coughs> right here and um, it's mandatory now I know in Virginia that this video it's actually a 60 minute um, video but I'm just going to show a short part of it here but um, it's mandatory that all high school football players watch it before the first practice starting last year because they just want them to be aware of what can happen if you don't report a concussion and if you just let it go on so I'll show you a little Lebreeze is a six foot two, two hundred and thirty pound freshman linebacker. At practice, he gets injured in a helmet to helmet collision. I remember him coming home that night, um, a little bit concussed. You know, you're kind of weary, you don't really know what's going on. In a game four days later, Plevridis tells the LaSalle trainer his head hurts. The trainer sends him to the student health clinic where he is diagnosed with a concussion. But two days later, a nurse tells Plevridis he can return to play after sitting out one game. Was he symptom free at that time? No, he was never symptom free. Not at all. Why do you say that? He always complained about that age. And how did he deal with it? I had a little handfuls at a time. Plevridis plays in two games without incident. Then, on November 5th, 2005, with 2.42 left in a game against Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, he tries to make a tackle on a punt return. He went down uh, like a ton of bricks and he hit the ground. And he was out. Today, 24-year-old Preston Plevridis is the face of concussion in consequence, he struggles to eat, walk, and talk four and a half years after his injury. That there was a case of um, second hand syndrome. He actually went straight into a coma and spent um, 90 days in the hospital, nine of which he was in a coma. And then once he came out, he um, went through extensive amounts of um, like training to help him. <coughs> get his walking back, get his talking back, and sort of get to what he could become, but now he's living the rest of his life in this building. So. So, anyone else have any 
questions? I just don't understand how no one would think that it was wrong of the nurse to say he could play two days after he was diagnosed with a condition. Yeah, that was back before a lot of the, I mean, it really wasn't as men back 